The Gunung Padang Terraced Core The mystery begins underground. At Gunung Padang in West Java, Indonesia, a hill long assumed to be natural was revealed through core drilling and ground-penetrating radar to contain multiple layers of man-made basalt terraces. The visible stepped platforms date to around 500 to 1000 CE, but deeper cores extracted between 2012 and 2015 identified older construction phases extending down 10 to 30 meters, with some radiocarbon samples returning dates as early as 20,000 to 25,000 BCE. No other known site from this period shows large-scale stone architecture. Archaeologists documented stacked columnar basalt blocks arranged in retaining layers below the modern surface. The blocks were deliberately placed to create reinforced fill, a method consistent with engineered terrace construction. Excavation reveals no natural deposition pattern that matches the uniform horizontal bedding found in multiple subsurface layers. However, the deepest dates remain contested, and no associated cultural artifacts have been recovered from the oldest strata. With uncertain chronology, missing tool evidence, and incomplete excavation data, the full construction history of Gunung Padang's terraced core remains unresolved. The Tikal Temple Acoustic Pyramids the mystery begins with sound. Several pyramids at the ancient Maya city of Tikal in Guatemala were designed so precisely that footsteps or hand claps at their base produce a chirping echo resembling the call of the Quetzal, a sacred bird in Maya cosmology. Structures such as Temple 1 and Temple 4 exhibit long-distance acoustic projection, allowing voices or instrument sounds to carry across hundreds of meters. These features appear centuries before documented Maya acoustic science. Archaeologists measured sound reflections from staircases formed by uniform risers that scatter acoustic waves at precise intervals. The pyramid faces act as giant diffusers, while adjacent plazas create reflective surfaces that amplify specific frequencies. The consistent chirp effect requires controlled geometry, yet no written records from Tikal describe acoustic design principles. The Maya left extensive astronomical inscriptions, but none reference sound engineering or ceremonial acoustics. Excavations reveal multiple building phases for each pyramid, but no indications of experimental construction, with no preserved design manuals, unclear intentionality, and acoustic behavior that aligns with modern engineering models. The mechanisms behind Tikal's sound-projecting pyramids remain unresolved. The Yerkapi Rampart of Hadassah the mystery begins with scale. At the Hittite capital of Hattusa in central Turkey, the Yerkapai Rampart forms a massive stone and earth fortification built between 1400 and 1200 BCE. The structure rises more than 30 meters high and stretches over 250 meters in length, consisting of a sloped stone base filled with compacted earth and capped with a defensive walkway. The polygonal blocks in the lower courses resemble earlier megalithic traditions, but no transitional engineering records survive. Archaeologists documented a hidden tunnel known as a postern running beneath the rampart. Its corbelled roof uses large limestone blocks shaped into interlocking layers that distribute weight down the tunnel walls. The ramp's outer face was constructed with tightly fitted blocks laid at angles consistent across the entire slope, requiring careful geometric planning. Yet no quarrying tools or lifting equipment appear in the site's surviving tool assemblages. Written tablets from Hadassa detail administrative matters and religious practices, but make no reference to the rampart's construction. Excavations show destruction layers and rebuilding phases, but the original engineering sequence from quarrying to earth packing to tunnel shaping remains unclear. With missing construction texts and no preserved scaffolding or ramps, the method used to build the Yerkapi rampart remains unresolved. The Keom Songdae Stone Observatory the mystery begins with alignment. In Korea's Silla Kingdom, the Keom Songdae Observatory was built in the 7th century CE using 362 granite blocks arranged in a 9-meter high tower with precise astronomical orientation. The number of stones appears to encode the days of the lunar year, and the openings align with solstice and equinox positions. Yet no surviving Silla texts explain the design principles behind these features. Archaeologists measured the tower's cylindrical shape, which is formed from stones laid in 27 circular layers, a number matched the lunar sidereal month. The narrow window near the midpoint allows light to enter the hollow interior only during specific seasons. The tower sits on a nearly perfect square foundation aligned to cardinal directions. Excavations found no internal stairs or platforms, suggesting observations were made from the outside or the tower served as a symbolic astronomical marker. Granite for the structure had to be quarried and shaped with high precision, but only iron chisels and hammers have been found from the Silla period. No detailed construction manuals, astronomical treatises, or engineering blueprints survive. 
5, with uncertain functional use in coded numerical symbolism and missing technical documentation, the purpose and construction logic of Kamsung Day remain unresolved. The Tarxian Oracle Room Acoustics The mystery begins with resonance. Inside the Tarxian Temple Complex in Malta, a chamber known as the Oracle Room amplifies male voices at a frequency of roughly 110 hertz, a low tone associated with ritual chanting, while dampening higher frequencies. The room dates to around 3150 to 2500 BCE, yet no Neolithic culture is known to have developed formal acoustic engineering at this level. Archaeologists documented curved wall surfaces and recessed niches that scatter sound waves in predictable patterns when modeled with modern acoustic software. The stone walls were shaped with pecking techniques that create micro-textures affecting sound diffusion. A hemispherical cavity near the chamber's entrance acts as a resonator, boosting low-frequency vibrations that match the average male vocal range. Similar architectural features do not appear elsewhere in contemporary Maltese megalithic sites. No tools specifically designed for acoustic shaping have been recovered, and no inscriptions describe ceremonial uses of the chamber. Excavation records show multiple construction phases, but no evidence clarifies whether acoustics were intentionally engineered or coincidentally produced by architectural choices. With missing cultural explanations and no preserved Neolithic sound instruments, the purpose behind the Oracle Room's acoustic properties remains unresolved. The Masuda no Iwafune monolith. The mystery begins with geometry. At Asuka in Japan, the Masuda no Iwafune monolith is a 700-ton granite block carved into sharp-edged recesses and two square pits on its upper surface. Its faces show straight cuts and angled planes inconsistent with natural weathering. The monument dates to an uncertain period, though many scholars place its construction in the Asuka era, 6th to 7th century CE. No nearby quarry matches the block's size and no written records explain its purpose. Archaeologists documented tool marks that resemble iron chiseling, but shaping granite at this scale would require sustained labor and advanced tools. The monolith rests on a hillside, and no transport corridors or lifting structures survive around it. Its recessed pits are aligned roughly east-west, but do not match known astronomical markers from the period. Nearby stone structures share stylistic similarities, but none exhibit comparable mass or engineering complexity. Local legends associate the monolith with early imperial tombs, yet no burial chamber or ritual objects have been found beneath or around it, with missing inscriptions, unclear quarry sources, and no cultural explanation for its geometric shaping. The engineering logic and purpose of the Masuda no Iwafune monolith remain unresolved. The Chokakirao Agricultural Terraces The mystery begins with slope. At Chokakirao in Peru's Vilcabamba Range, Inca engineers built agricultural terraces on mountainsides with gradients exceeding 50 degrees. Constructed between the 15th and early 16th centuries CE, the terraces use multi-layered retaining walls made of precisely fitted schist blocks. Some wall sections rise more than 5 meters high, yet remain stable despite seasonal rains and seismic activity. Archaeologists documented multi-tiered terrace systems filled with engineered soil layers that include gravel drainage beds, moisture-retaining topsoil, and compacted subsoil. Irrigation channels cut into the cliff face deliver water evenly across terraces that span vertical drops of hundreds of meters. Maintaining level planting surfaces on such steep ground required geometric surveying but no Inca measuring tools suited for high gradient calculations have been recovered. Access routes to many terraces are narrow paths carved into cliff edges, leaving limited space for moving heavy building stones. Excavations show no scaffolding, ramps, or staging areas large enough to support traditional construction methods. With missing engineering records, unclear labor organization, and limited tool evidence, the methods used to build the steep terraces of Chokakirao remain unresolved. The Petra High Place Platforms The mystery begins at elevation. At Petra in Jordan, Nabataean engineers carved ceremonial high places into the tops of sandstone cliffs between the 3rd century BCE and the 1st century CE. These platforms, such as the High Place of Sacrifice, include stairways cut directly into rock faces, drainage channels, altars, and viewing platforms. Some sit over 150 meters above the valley floor. Archaeologists mapped staircases that maintain consistent rise and tread dimensions, despite being carved along uneven cliff contours. The platforms contain basins and channels designed to collect and divert water, which required precise calculations of runoff and erosion. Quarry marks indicate multi-stage shaping of sandstone, but the tools used would have needed to withstand prolonged abrasion against coarse-grained rock. Transporting workers, tools, and materials to these heights presents logistical challenges. No large scaffolding remains have been found, and many routes to the platforms are too narrow for significant equipment transport. With limited inscriptions documenting ceremonial practices and no construction records preserved, the engineering sequence behind Petra 
Sinatra's high place platforms remains unclear. The Shibaojai Rock Fortress The mystery begins on a cliff. In Chongqing's Zhang County, the Shibaojai Fortress rises 12 stories along the face of a 56-meter-tall quartz sandstone monolith. Built during the Ming Dynasty in the 18th century and possibly incorporating earlier structural elements, the fortress uses no nails in its primary frame. Instead, mortise and tenon joints lock massive wooden beams into the cliff's natural ledges. Archaeologists documented the structure's tiered layout, which aligns precisely with carved footholds and ledges on the rock face. Each level distributes weight vertically through interlinked timber posts sunk into sockets cut into the cliff. The interior staircases ascend through narrow shafts, and the outer walls follow the rock's natural curvature. No no quarry debris identifies where the stone cut footholds were carved, and erosion patterns indicate long term modification predating the wooden superstructure. Historical records list renovations but do not describe the engineering principles behind the original cliff attachment. The fortress survived repeated Yangtze flooding cycles and high wind loads, suggesting an advanced understanding of load distribution. With missing construction texts, unclear early dates, and no surviving scaffolding or lifting tools, the origin and engineering logic behind the Shibao Jai Rock Fortress remain unresolved. The Yupalinos Tunnel of Samos The mystery begins underground. Built in the 6th century BCE on the island of Samos, the Yupalinos Tunnel is a 1,036-meter-long aqueduct excavated simultaneously from both ends through a limestone mountain. The two teams met near perfectly in the center, with alignment errors of only a few meters horizontally and a few centimeters vertically. Accuracy rare even in modern tunneling without advanced instruments. Archaeologists analyzed the tunnel's zigzag path, which appears to be an intentional adjustment designed to correct alignment during excavation. The tunnel maintains a consistent gradient, allowing water to flow from the spring source to the ancient city. No inscriptions explain the surveying techniques used, but ancient sources attribute the tunnel to the engineer Eupolinos of Megara. The project required constant course checks, shaft excavation, and debris removal, none of which left preserved staging areas. Iron chisels and lamps were found in later layers, but no specialized surveying tools survive. With incomplete historical documentation, uncertain excavation sequence, and a alignment accuracy that exceeds typical Greek engineering of the period, the exact techniques used to construct the Eupolinos tunnel remain unresolved.